Hello everyone, I'm Deb Zaffer. I'm Assistant Director and Career Consultant here at Duquesne. Um, welcome to the Career Success How to Work a Virtual Job Fair event. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our special guest today, Jill Thomas. Jill is a Talent Acquisition Manager at Enterprise Holdings. Um, she regularly recruits at our career fairs. And today she's gonna share some hints and tips um, to know how to deal with the virtual job fair scene. Jill? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much for um, coming today. Obviously, I know it's a, it's a little bit different of a world, right? But we are um, excited for the changes. Um, so typically, I always present at Duquesne on how to work a career fair the week before the career fair. So I'm just going to switch it up a little bit and teach you guys how to work a virtual career fair. And honestly, you know, it, it's not much different. We still want you to um, be prepared and practice. And so it's going to look a little bit different, but I still want you to be able to introduce yourself, be able to talk about yourself because it can be overwhelming, right? So if you've never been to a, a career fair, it's still overwhelming. So um, I want to try to help you navigate through that. A couple of the things that I want to talk with you today, um, we're going to talk about obviously preparing for the fair. Um, believe it or not, um, there is more than just showing up with a suit <laughs> and um, showing up to the fair. So we're going to talk about how to prepare, what to do ahead of time. Um, we're going to talk about the go time and what that means as the day of the actual fair, during the fair, how to kind of navigate that. Um, I will talk about making the cut and following up and what that's going to look like. And then obviously I will briefly talk about opportunities with enterprise. I will be at the fair next week though. So if you're all interested and want to know more, um, I can give you more information then. I just want to kind of let you know what, what we do and kind of go through that. So, um, so to get started, obviously, um, you know, we're going to talk about preparing for the fair. So what I want you to do is talk about a self-assessment. I'll go into more detail with that. Um, how to do your homework, what materials to prepare. I'll, I'll talk a lot about what you should have on hand. Um, we're going to talk about an elevator speech because you need to be able to talk about yourself. And that is the main thing that we are selling um, at a career fair. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the platform and what to expect um, during the virtual fair because I, for a lot of us, um, myself included, these are going to be some of the first virtual fairs that, that you'll be doing. So I want you to know what to expect. Okay, so self-assessment. Obviously, you know, at a career fair, you need to know what it is that you're there for, what you're looking for, and it's all about yourself. So if you're going to a career fair, you want to be able to talk about, you know, what it is that you're looking for. Um, so what are your goals, right? Um, so what I want you to do ahead of time is, you know, take some notes, write it down, um, really talk about, you know, look for your goals. Are you, you know, what year are you? Are you a junior looking for an internship? Um, are you a freshman or a sophomore just looking for more insight on maybe different careers and what to do pre prepare for those? Um, but what, where do you want to be? So are you looking for internships that can get you to that ultimate long-term career plan after college? Um, and then what's your long-term goals? You know, your five, 10 year goals. Um, what this is going to do, it's going to open you up to ask yourself some questions. All right, what do I really want to do? What's going to get me there? Because the whole point of a career fair is you have these opportunities to talk to all of these recruiters and you need to be able to control the conversation. And that's the one thing I will talk about all the time is controlling that conversation and really getting what you need out of that recruiter. So I want you to be able to kind of look at yourself and be able to, to answer these questions when the recruiter asks you as well. Um, so also with that self-assessment, need to look at, you know, your skills. And we always talk about, you know, our strengths and weaknesses, what, which we don't love to talk about. Um, but I want you to kind of think about that. You know, what have you done already? What do you like doing in maybe your past positions? Maybe if you've been in some organizations, what don't you like that maybe you want some more experience with? Um, again, strengths and weaknesses. So, you know, for myself, um, while in college, I was a teller at a bank. I loved the customer service aspect. Um, I really wanted to continue to do that. Um, I wanted to utilize that, that experience that I already had in that career path. So I want you to kind of look at that self-assessment and understand those things so that you can talk to a recruiter and say, hey, this is what I really like. This is what I'm looking to more interested in. Okay, so also to prepare for the fair, I want you to do some homework. Um, so I want you to look on Handshake, and obviously everything is through Handshake, the platform is through Handshake, um, and do some research on the companies, who is going to be there, what recruiters are gonna be there. Um, the biggest thing that I can su suggest with this virtual career fair 
is to plan. Um, you obviously can see who is, what companies are gonna be there, how many recruiters they're gonna have. Um, some companies will only have one representative and they have very limited time slots. Some will have five or six. Um, I highly, highly suggest registering ahead of time. Um, so go on today, tomorrow, um, obviously the fair is next Thursday, do it before Thursday. Make sure you get a time slot for the top companies that you want to meet. Um, the fair will be open for several hours, so give yourself you know, enough time um, to really make sure you're utilizing that opportunity to meet with those recruiters. So again, I want you to kind of research, um, look at the companies, go to their website, see what jobs they have posted that they're looking for. Is it internships? Um, you know, what are the specifics that they're looking for and how does it relate? Um, one thing that I do highly recommend is being open to those companies and there's different job opportunities um, because you might never know that that opportunity might lead to a longer career path with that company. So be open to talking to some companies and some positions that might be outside of, you know, your realm, what you might be thinking, um, because also some companies might only have advertised one position, but they might be hiring for other other roles than what they have posted. So um, I recommend going to that company website, seeing other opportunities that they have available within the company. Um, look at those job descriptions, you know, read what it is that they're looking for, get some buzzwords um, on the job description because that will help you as well when you go to talk about the position and you can even tailor what it is that you do um, or have done in the past and how it's gonna meet that job. And then that's gonna help you kind of talk about that. Um, so again, I highly recommend doing this research and you're gonna have a top five companies that you wanna talk with. So make sure you register for those time slots um, different companies will have, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this, but some will have 30 minute information ses sessions. Some will just do 10 minute one on one sessions. So I highly recommend scheduling those 10 minute conversations with that top company. And then maybe, you know, if you have other time, sign up for those other um, 30 minute info sessions to just get some more information. Um, one big thing that I highly suggest that you all do is utilize your network. Um, so what I would do is obviously if you're not already on LinkedIn, get on LinkedIn, um, see if you have connections, you know, friends, family, neighbors that work at these organizations and, you know, set some time, reach out to them. Hey, can you tell me a little bit more about the company? How did you get there? Um, and, and really look at those opportunities and, and how it relates with what you want to do, because that's going to help control the conversation as well. So really do some research and make sure you know who's going to be there. And it's going to help control that conversation when you do talk to that recruiter. So again, um, preparing for the fair in regards to the materials that you want to bring with you. Um, it is, you, please make sure you have a well-written mistake-free resume. And, and I say that um, mistake-free because, you know, with our resumes, I get it. You have this document that you've been created and you looked at it a hundred times. You might have spelled and wrong, right? But you didn't recognize it because you keep reading that utilize career services. They are there for you at Duquesne. Um, have them proofread that resume. Make sure it's, it's up to date and it's ready to go. Have that with you the day of the fair. Um, when you are in these one-on-one -on -one sessions, you can share your screen. You can share it with the recruiters so that they can look at your resume. Um, because again, that's the conversation starter, right? Um, also, when you're going to be following up, you can email it to that recruiter. Um, I, I put on here references because I... I really want to make sure if you're putting on your resume um, that references are available and you have a reference sheet, please make sure that you've contacted those individuals ahead of time. Um, I have contacted references in the past um, and they have no idea that I'm going to be calling them. So, you know, maybe not the day of the fair we're going to call, but later on when you're when you're interviewing, we will call and we will ask for a reference. So if you're going to have the, that reference sheet, please do make sure that they know, hey, I'm interviewing. These individuals are going to call you. I'm, I'm applying for this job. Give them a heads up so they can really give you a really good reference for the future. Um, cover letters. This is, I think, important for those, you know, top five companies that I mentioned, you know, the, the companies that you really want to talk to that you have the most interest in. I would tailor a resume and a cover letter to that specific um, recruiter. Maybe even shoot them an email ahead of time. Hey, I scheduled an interview. Here's my resume if you want to peruse it ahead of time. Um, my biggest tip is to not have a generic cover letter that you would just give to anybody and everybody because the point of a cover letter is to to tell more of the story than what your resume does you know really highlight 
um, why you're interested, how your specific experience relates to that job. Again, I, I talked about doing your research and using those buzzwords from the job description. Um, this is where you can really strengthen that and tell the story as to why you're the best candidate for the position. Um, so if you're going to take the time to create a, a cover letter, do it for those few specific jobs. And then a cheat sheet. This is my number one tip. Um, if you're going to do your, your research and your homework, uh, when you're going to these websites, you're going on Handshake, you're reviewing the company, you're reading the job description, have a cheat sheet, write down notes, right? So this company is hiring for the management training position. They're a privately owned and operated company. Talking about enterprise. Um, make sure you take <coughs> notes so that when you're in the room and you're talking to that recruiter, you know, you, you've done research on five, 10, 15 companies, you're gonna forget it, right? So have that note so when you're in the one-on-one -on -one meeting with your recruiter, you can have your cheat sheet in front of you and it helps, again, control the conversation. So I really, really, I think that's a huge thing. It's gonna help you, um, when, you when your nerves are, are going to kind of help you through that. Okay. And then, so I want you to prepare as well to be able to introduce yourself and talk about why you're there, right? What the whole point of the career fair is to really make sure you're introducing yourself and you're getting the most from that. So what I want you to do is I want you to prepare an elevator speech. Um, I don't know if any of you have heard of the elevator speech before, but basically what it means, it is a 15 to 30 second introduction. The reason they call it an elevator speech is because it would take the time if you get on an elevator with a CEO or recruiter of a company um, to go from the ground floor to the top floor to make that introduction. So I cannot tell you how many times I've met people on, on campus and in these virtual career fairs where it's just kind of like that first introduction is fumbled and you know really don't know what to talk about like why are we here Again, it's all about controlling the conversation. So create that elevator speech so that you can really get the most out of that and start that conversation organically. And I'll give you an example. So if I was a junior um, and I would walk into a uh, virtual career fair setting, I would start off by saying, hi, my name's Jill Thomas. I'm a junior here at Duquesne. I'm a marketing major. Um, I'm I'm looking for internships for this summer that are going to elevate my career path. I love customer service. I was a bank teller prior. Um, I love the sales aspect. I, I would like to get a little bit more experience um, so that I can continue that path post-graduation. I see that you have a management training program available. Can you tell me a little bit more about that and how that might help me hit my career goals? So you kind of hit right all through that, right? Be able to, you know, talk about yourself. Why are you there? What is it that you're looking for? Sell yourself a little bit. So then that recruiter is going to say, okay, they were a teller. Let me talk about this. They're interested in an internship and they're going to be able to, to tell you more and it's going to save some time. So you get right down into the nitty gritty and they can give you exactly what it is that you're looking for. So please make sure you prepare an elevator speech and you're able to introduce yourself. Um, I will be honest, my biggest pet peeve is when I talk to a student and they say, hey, tell me what you got for me. Well, tell me what you have for me, right? So again, make sure you're able to kind of wow them right off the bat. Okay, so obviously, you know, this virtual fair is going to look a little bit different um, and you're going to be using the Handshake platform. Um, what I, I suggest doing, you know, ahead of the fair is to update your Handshake profile. So you can go into your Handshake profile and make sure your graduation year, your major is updated, um, click some career interests, like you can pick things that have interest to you. Um, you can talk about, you know, you can choose skill sets and experience. It's just gonna elevate that profile so when we walk into a meeting together, I can see your profile and again, it's already there. So it's part of that elevator speech, but the platform is doing that for you. So make sure that you take time and you, you edit that before the fair, I suggest doing that a few days ahead of time. Um, again, I already talked about it, but register. Uh, please make sure that you are doing this. You will be getting, if you haven't already, you'll be getting a lot of emails from Duquesne and Handshake reminding you about the fair, um, and it's going to tell you to register. So don't miss out on speaking to one of those recruiters if they run out of time slots. So make sure you, you're ready for that, register ahead of time. Test your technology. 
make sure that you know how to work the Handshake platform. Uh, make sure you know how to turn on the, the camera, right? Sometimes that's the biggest thing. I do a lot of Zoom interviews and sometimes it's so simple, but we forget to turn on our cameras. So make sure you test that again ahead of time. Um, there are a lot of great webinars and information sessions through Handshake. Um, I highly suggest when you have some time over the weekend or maybe you know beginning of next week, just go in and click through some of those um, just to make sure you know exactly how to navigate the fair and what to expect. Uh, it's really gonna help you, right? And again, do your homework, research those employers. Um, look, we all, if we're on Handshake, we're there. We already have pro profiles and platforms. So look at those companies, look at the recruiters, head over to LinkedIn, pull up that recruiter's information. It's just going to help you prepare a little bit more. Okay, so you've done all your homework. <laughs> um, now it's, it's go time, right? It's the day of the fair. The, you have time slots scheduled. Um, I want to talk about what to expect that day. So first and foremost, dressing for success, but also staging for success. And this is like a new idea because it's virtual. Um, you know, we want you to make a first good impression. So even though it's virtual and we're still sitting at home, um, please make sure that you are dressing professionally. It is the first impression. Um, it is still very job related. So we want you to be professional. Um, wear, you know, wear suit or professional attire, right? I won't see your sweatpants um, or your leggings, that's fair. Um, but wear a nice blazer, wear a nice blouse, uh, make sure you do your hair, um, comb your hair. <laughs> Take the time to really make sure that you look presentable and you're putting your best self forward. Um, during the time, make sure your camera is on, right? This is our time to meet you and make those interactions. So smile, make eye contact in the camera, um, really make sure you're engaging with that recruiter and be confident, right? Um, be excited to be there, thank them. Um, you will have 10 minutes, and we'll talk more about this, but you'll have 10 minutes undivided with those recruiters. So utilize that time, really put your personality out there, really make sure you're utilizing that to get the most that you can out of that opportunity. Um, one of my biggest tips is to check your background. So I have a pretty blank um, background here just with my picture of Canada. Um, make sure that you're in an area, if, you, if there's a door, shut the door, let your roommates know that you are busy. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've been on virtual events and I've seen roommates walking by, uh, I've seen people in towels coming out of the shower, like it just, it happens, right? And I'll be honest, I've been on fairs and I didn't shut my door and my dog busts in, like I get it, it happens, we're not going to judge you for that, but just make sure that those distractions um, are gone. Really make sure you plan for that. Um, you know, if, if you if you can't be somewhere quiet, maybe you're taking a break somewhere, at least have some earphones in to drown out the background noise and really make sure you're ready to give that recruiter your undivided attention. Okay. So what to expect face-to-face, -face. I keep saying that. Turn that camera on. The whole point that we're there is to see you and to interact with you and we can read each other, right? That way we can, we can gauge. So make sure that your camera is on. Um, so I've talked a little bit about this already, so I wanna go more in detail. So how Handshake works is the, the platform will be, you can schedule 10 minute sessions with a recruiter. Um, they will have a schedule. Um, and you can pick times as they go. They will fill up, so schedule ahead of time. Also, some recruiters, if they, if they utilize this feature, there will be a large group conversation that you can join. Um, for myself, I know I have it scheduled that I'm doing two big events during the day, so they're half hour sessions where it'll be myself and then 50 people can join that event. And it's gonna be more of a, just an overview of the company. Hey, here's what we do, here's what we hire for, ask me questions, it's gonna be open-ended. That way, if maybe if you didn't get that one-on-one -on -one meeting, it's still an opportunity for you to meet that recruiter. Um, I do encourage you to join those. I think that's where you're gonna get the most information. And then sometimes too, if that recruiter schedule isn't filled up, maybe you learned about that, we'll schedule for one of their later um, appointments because you just learned a lot about them and you wanna hear more. Um, so really utilize both of those. Uh, the 10 minute conversation is more one-on-one -on -one, and the larger events are more of a information se session. Um, so really make sure you, you're utilizing this event and, and use it for the best um, for your advantage. Um, if there is a chat room setting, just to give you a heads up, sometimes it's just chatting. Um, I know Handshake's not this way, but 
some virtual events that you go for are just going to be, you know, recruiters there. You say, hi, how are you? Um, or people can just pop in and out like those group settings. Whenever you pop in, just make sure you're engaged. You're asking questions, just kind of be on point and use, use the, that, that time right for you. Okay. So do's and don'ts. I have been a recruiter for a very long time. I've done a lot of events virtual and in person. Um, so I just want to kind of give you a little bit of things that I've done myself and seen myself to learn from. Um, number one, use your elevator speech. You know, I already talked about that. I've said it probably 20 times already, but control the conversation. Really make sure that you are getting what you need out of that recruiter and out of that time. Um, so really be prepared, be able to talk about yourself and what you're looking for. Um, be on time and show up. So that's the biggest thing. If you've scheduled a time slot and you're planning on meeting that recruiter, like I mentioned, you know, their time is limited. You know, they might only have 18 time slots that day you know, we're excited and we're excited to talk to those students, but if you don't show up, that's a time slot that could have been used from somebody else. So please make sure that you're on time um, and you show up to those events. And if you, if something happens, cancel that so that someone else can take that spot. I already told you, do your research. Do your research. Um, we're going to see that you did that. We're going to see that you're prepared and that's going to wow us. So really make sure that you, you've done that. I've already talked about this, you know, smile, use your eye contact, um, let your personality shine. This is your time to get to know that recruiter and really make that good first impression. Um, really control the conversation by using open-ended questions. You know, ask them, hey, what are these opportunities? What are you looking for in a candidate? What experience do I need to get? So maybe you're a freshman or a sophomore looking for that internship or that full-time position post-grad. Ask them, hey, here's my resume. Can you give me some insight? What is it that you look for in a candidate? You know, what opportunities should I be looking for? What other skill sets should I gain that's going to help me get this position later on? So really open, ask those big questions so that they can answer and, and you can get the most out of that conversation. Um, biggest thing, how do I follow up? How do I apply for this job? Where, when is this job going to be posted? You know, give me more information and make sure if you've asked those questions and you're interested, you follow up with that. Um, offer your resume. Always stay professional. Uh, again, it's 10 minutes, so you don't know where that conversation might go to. Maybe you really connect with that recruiter, you hit it off, and maybe you kind of talk about some side conversations. Keep it professional. Don't talk about what you did last night. Um, and then again, always thank, thank the recruiter for their time. Um, you know, it, we're there. We love to be there, but, you know, thank us and, and make sure that you're good first impression, right? So finally, I want to talk about making the cut. Um, you put all this work into researching and showing up and having these great conversations with these recruiters. Well, don't let it end there, right? A lot of the work comes after the fact. So um, afterwards, you know, you've met some of these great recruiters, um, get their contact information, connect with them on LinkedIn afterwards. Ask them, hey, can I connect with you, gain more information? Um, send them a thank you note. It is a dying art, I will be very honest. Um, after interviews, after career fairs, the people that send me interview or thank you letters, I'm super excited and I'm gonna follow up with them because not a lot of people do that. So really make sure that you send them a quick note, quick email, hey, just a reminder, I met you today, I'm super excited for this position, I'm gonna apply. Um, I put phone calls on here because that's sometimes, Recruiters aren't always in the office and sometimes we're at these events, so we don't always get back to you right away. I highly recommend only sending emails um, and messages through LinkedIn. Um, leave the phone, phone calls for later. Um, make sure you're just using email. If that recruiter has talked to you and they told you, hey, my job is open today, make sure you fill out an application. Make sure you're completing the application. Do exactly what it is that they told you to do. If they're having on-campus interviews or they're having virtual interviews a different date and they told you about that, they told you about that for a reason. They want you to apply, they want you to follow up. So take notes when you're talking to that recruiter and make sure you're doing the things that they told you to do. Um, and then, so if they give you information, so if they send you follow-up emails with different literature or, you know, they give you their contact information, maybe they're not hiring right now. Um, maybe they're going to be hiring in the spring semester. File that away. Keep that on hand somewhere. So in the spring when they are open or you're ready to apply, you have that. Um, again, you're using all this information at this time. Um, make sure that you are following up and you're utilizing that. I put on here to be accessible. Um, and what I mean by that is sometimes recruiters 
the process goes by quickly, right? Maybe they're already in the interview process, but they really had a great conversation and they're really interested in you. And they're telling you, hey, I have interviews on Monday. Are you available on Monday? Know your schedule, be available so that you can say, yeah, I'm free at 2.30, right? So that you can really make sure that you are connecting. So that's basically it. Um, I briefly want to just kind of talk about what I do. Um, I obviously am a recruiter. Um, I'm a talent acquisition manager for Enterprise Rent-A-Car, um, the rental car company, right? We pick you up. Um, we do a lot more than that. So I hire for our full-time management training program in an internship. Some are going into your senior year. Um, it is a promote from within culture. It's sales, customer service, and leadership. Um, it's a great opportunity. Um, Post-grad, we are one of the largest recruiters for college grads in the United States. We are everywhere. Um, we are privately owned and operated. There is a location within 15 minutes of 95% of the population. So if you live in Pittsburgh or you're from somewhere else and you're looking for a career path, we have those opportunities. Um, I will be at the career fair next week. I have time slots. I'm doing two information sessions. I forget the times. I think one is at like 1130 and one is at like two go on handshake. It's there. Um, sign up for those. If you're interested in my positions, feel free to ask me more. Um, come to the fair, sign up for a time slot, and I can't wait to see all of you there. Any questions? So Jill, mm -hmm. I just wanted to point out that we, the business communications and technology fair is kind of a two-day event. Right, I so forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> on Wednesday, it is also happening. Um, Wednesday is targeting more um, accounting, finance, and technology students, but everybody is more than welcome to come to both sessions. Right. Okay. Um, Jill, we do have a question. Okay. How do you suggest making sure we get a recruiter's email for a thank you note during the conversation? Great question. So ask, right? Uh, make sure you make a note of that. Uh, on Handshake though, they have a profile as well. So you should have all of that information from the company. Um, but you know, some companies will have like multiple recruiters. And if you've talked to one person, just ask them, hey, do you have a follow-up um, email address? Can I email you after the fact? If you forget it though, um, you can find that on Handshake. You can find their profile and their contact information will be there. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is I'd just like to show everyone kind of the student view of how to actually get into the fair, how to register, and how to schedule those sessions. So when you log into Handshake, this is what you should see. Um, you can click on events. It will bring you to the events page. You'll see here there's career fair. So you can click on career fair. That will actually give you all of the career fairs there. So when you just scroll down slightly, you will see that we have our day one and day two of the fair, again, Wednesday the 16th and Thursday the 17th. Um, look at both of them. Um, they target different things, but it's really important to make sure you don't miss anything. Um, now at the top over on the side, you'll see this um, register kind of um, register button. You wanna click that. Now that actually makes sure that you're registered for the fair. However, if you wish to talk to any employers, you do need to make sure that you look at the sessions as Jill was mentioning. So as she said, there are group sessions, there are um, individual one-on-one -on -one sessions. Now these are not necessarily interviews per se, as Jill mentioned, but really just a time to face-to-face, -to -face, you know, kind of meet and greet, kind of talk a little bit. So when you look at that, you can see the different group sessions. Um, you can click on um, kind of whatever works for you. Um, now when you do schedule those sessions over here on the right-hand side, you will actually see those sessions, um, you know, listed for you so that you will always know kind of what time did I sign up for what session? Is that a one-on-one -on -one session, is it a group session? All of that will be right here. And when it's time to attend the fair, you log into Handshake, you'll click on fairs, you'll see the fairs there. Um, you'll see the URL for the, um, you can click on the fairs and you'll see this. Now when it's time for your session, you will see all the sessions listed over here on the right-hand side. Click on the session and that will take you directly to that session. Um, Joe, we do have another question. Um, <laughs> Uh, I know you mentioned this briefly, however, what is a good approach for a freshman to express interest in an internship in a few years? Or what should I be talking to recruiters about? So first and foremost, I love it when freshmen come to a fair and I think sometimes they're like, well, I'm just, and they always tell me, I'm just a freshman, I don't know. Don't discourage yourself. I think it's amazing that you're coming early and, and just you know introduce yourself. I'm a freshman, this is my major. Maybe if you're unsure of your major, but you know your interest, again, that whole self-assessment thing, 
what is it that you are looking for and why are you there? So, I, you know, I'm looking for internships ahead of time. Um, maybe I haven't declared a major, but I'm interested in, you know, science or computer systems or whatnot, or, you know, customer service. Um, really make sure you know a little bit about what it is that you're looking for um, and, and ask them questions. What types of positions do you have? When do you typically offer those internships? Um, and if they say, you know, not till junior year or whatnot, you know, a lot of companies though, even if they have a internship available junior year, they do start to recruit your sophomore year. So it's awesome that you go ahead of time that way you get that information because you don't want to miss the ball. So as a freshman going to a career fair, I think it's important to ask those questions so that you don't miss the deadline. So really just, you know, ask the questions that you're interested in. Hey, what are the positions? When do you start to apply? When should I start, you know, contacting you and submitting my resume. So I think it's awesome when freshmen go um, because you're going to get ahead of the game and you're going to find out a lot more and you're going to be number one when, you know, application on the pile when that job opens because that recruiter told you about it. Um, Joe, we have another question. Uh, mm -hmm. How important is a cover letter? I know you mentioned not to have a generic cover letter. Then how should I be sending the cover letter and resume to the recruiters I've booked a session with? If, I don't have emails for the specific people who I book sessions. Yeah, you don't have to have an email. That's fine. But if you know that you signed a session, um, here's my thing. I do not recommend you sitting in your in your dorm or your in your room um, creating 10 different cover letters. Um, the only reason I suggest that is if you have that number one company, you know exactly what that position is. You've been waiting for this role for the past three years to, to talk to a recruiter for. Um, that's when you want to tailor that co cover letter. It's hard to tailor a cover letter for a ton of jobs that you don't know yet. So um, the cover letters are important when you actually go to apply for a job. Um, it's just going to, to kind of put you up ahead of the game for the career fair. So, you know, if you have that one job that you know a lot about, then tailor that cover letter. Um, but like I said, I, I don't recommend you filling out, ten, creating 10 different cover letters for the career fair. It's just going to help you after the fact during the interview process. Um, but if you have that one or two top companies, go ahead and take the time to do that. Okay. Thank you, Jill. We do have another question. What's the difference between a presentation with a recruiter during a fair and a presentation during an actual interview for a job? Should we discuss matters like salaries, for example, with recruiters, or is it preferable to keep those questions for later on? Okay, great question. So the career fair, so this career fair that you're signing up for and that we're talking about today, they're one-on-one -on -one sessions. So if we were in person, we would all have tables that you would walk up to, you know, there might be a line, and you, it's just a conversation with a recruiter to gain information. That's the same thing that we're doing today. It is one-on-one -on -one and it's in a private um, virtual setting. So it looks more like an interview, but this is not an interview. You haven't applied for a job yet. You, you, know, you haven't gotten an interview. It is just a conversation with the recruiter to find out more about the position. So it's, I'm great that, I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, these are not interviews. This is just a conversation to find out more information about the job, maybe how to apply, um, opportunities in the future, things that you can, it's just a conversation with a recruiter to find out more about, you know, obviously to tell them about yourself, but if you're looking for a year or two down the line, it's to gain information on that. So the point of this career fair and these virtual events is to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with the recruiter, um, to introduce yourself, to sell yourself so that you can get an interview in the future. Was there another okay. part of that question? Um, I think you covered it. Um, okay. There is another question though. Okay. Um, what do you recommend we do if the one-on-one -on -one sessions fill up for a specific company we're really interested in? Great question. So if they fill up, um, I, what I would do is I would send that recruiter an email. Hey, I see the sessions filled up. You know, is there another time that we can meet? Um, I also suggest um, there will also be the Westpac's career fair that you would be available as a Duquesne student to attend that as well. Um, I forget the date of that. That's mid to late October. Um, so more than likely those recruiters will be there as well. Um, but the biggest thing is if those events and those signups fill up, um, get that contact information from the recruiter and see if they have another date and time that they can have a quick conversation or just shoot them an email. Hey, I didn't get a chance to sign up. Your schedule filled up. Um, I do have some more questions. And then, you know, maybe they'll just say, hey, shoot me those questions and I'd be happy to answer those for you. Or more than likely, they, they'll be able to set up some time 
later because we all get this. This is all new for us. Um, so we want to make sure that we're able to talk to people. But I would just kind of reach out and say, hey, I, I want some more information. Do you have some time that we can chat? Or can I send you some questions and can you get back to me at your at your free you know, opportunity? Thank you, Jill. Um, just a quick note, uh, attendees, if you have not already, please type your name and your full Duquesne email address in the chat box for attendance purposes. Um, Jill, we do have one more question. Um, yeah. What is the difference between a cover letter and a resume? Yeah, good question. So the resume and the cover letter, two different documents um, when you're applying for a job. So the resume is your main document. Um, we want you to have a, it's very important to have a one page resume that highlights your experience and your skill set. So your resume is basically just a blurb of, you know, your education, um, graduation year. One tip I have about a resume is to make sure that you put your actual graduation date, not just like 2018 to present. Um, I want to know when you're graduating semester, like spring, um, May 2020, uh, December 2021, make sure you put that actual date so we know what when you're graduating so we know what, what job to put you in, like internship or full time. Um, but that resume is a tailored out, um, just one page document highlighting your jobs. The more detail specific um, you can be, that's gonna can, you know, help that recruiter, they wanna talk to you more. Um, again, if you go to career services, they can help you create a resume if you don't have one. Um, a cover letter is just more that, it's a letter. It's a letter introducing yourself that you would, it's basically the cover page of your resume when you would send it to a recruiter to introduce yourself. And since the resume is very brief and it's a bulleted document, the cover letter is more of an opportunity to introduce yourself, use more, you know, sentences to, to really sell yourself, fluff up um, your experience and kind of really make sure you're selling yourself to that recruiter. And hey, um, we have another. can I cut in just real quick with um, another kind of tip with the differentiating the one on one in the group sessions. Um, so a one on one session during the virtual career fair. Think of that like you're walking up to a booth at an in person fair. So you're going to walk up to the booth, you're going to have your quick, you know, introduction, and you're going to chat with that employer for and you have 10 minutes. So that seems to help a little bit with differentiating. Um, the one-on-one -on -one session and the group sessions. The group sessions are more like an information session with the employers. Thanks, Jen. Jill, we do have another question. How do you sell yourself without bragging? It's a great question. So um, there is a difference, right, of bragging. Um, the one thing that, so I talk to a lot of students and the one thing that they always, I think people are afraid to really, um, we all, we all do it. We don't, we don't want to, we don't want to brag. We don't want to boast. We think that it, it's bad, right? But you are at a career fair and you're talking to these recruiters to sell your experience. Um, the one thing that a lot of people say to me is, well, I don't have a lot of experience. So if you tell me that you don't have a lot of experience, I already think, well, okay, they don't have a lot of experience. So don't do that. Um, you know, you really want to make sure that you're explaining what it is that you've done. Um, I told this to a student last, last week that I met at a resume writing event um, that he really had a hard time like selling himself. And I said, okay, well then pretend you're selling somebody else. Talk about somebody else's experience, but it's yours, right? If that's really so hard for you, but that's the whole point is you've all done some amazing things, you know, and you might just think, well, it's just a classroom setting or, you know, I'm just in this, this club or organization on campus, but that's huge. I want to hear all about your experiences. If it was a part-time job, if you were the president of your club or organization and you increased recruiting, these are all super important things that you might not think are relevant to the career world, but they are. You know, I want to hear what you've done because I'm going to listen to that experience. I'm going to say, hey, that's going to fit really well with our internship that we have. And we take those experiences and we just build on that. And we teach you how to to do all of that in the real world. So I know sometimes it's really hard to talk about ourselves without sounding braggy, um, but you have to do it in this setting. Um, you know, really get the confidence 
Um, do not discredit what you've done in the past and talk about it. Um, you know, get to know that recruiter. We're all very friendly um, and just kind of say, hey, this is what I've done in the past. And I think that it might relate, but can you tell me more about how I can use these skills more in your career set? So really the biggest tip that I have is being comfortable talking about yourself because I know it's not easy, um, but that's the whole point. And, you know, really sell yourself and your experiences and don't ever discredit and say, well, I didn't really do that because you've done some great things and I want to hear about it. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Jill. This was very helpful. Um, yeah. Appreciate your insight um, and we look forward to seeing you at the fair. Yeah, I look forward to seeing all of you. Make sure you sign up. Um, make sure you use this opportunity. You know, um, we're here for you. So really make sure you're signing up and, and showing up next week. We're excited to meet you guys. Great. Thanks, everyone, for attending. Have a great evening. Thanks, guys.